Well, I've been interested for many years in the pathways that drive spondyloarthritis, and particularly in psoriatic arthritis. Psoriatic arthritis is a disease that affects many tissues, skin, joint, and thesis, and there are certainly common pathologic features that are starting to emerge. We, we know from genome-wide studies, for example, that the IL-23, IL-17 pathway looks particularly interesting. Now, for many years in my laboratory, we are a cellular immunology lab primarily, we've been interested in identifying cells that release IL-17, cells that respond to IL-23, and looking at their effector functions. And along with many other groups, we've come to the conclusion that the IL-23, IL-17 pathway is really quite a potent effect of inflammatory cascade. So for example, if we look at the tissues of people with psoriatic arthritis in the skin and in the joints, and even actually in circulating peripheral blood, we find elevated levels of IL-17A expression, TNF expression, and that fits with the idea that these might become useful therapy targets. The last decade has seen an unbelievable change in the rheumatology spectrum. When I started my clinical practice, the agents available to me were methotrexate, gold, and penicillamine. And whilst they were moderately effective in some patients, they were very often toxic, and the overall benefits accrued to patients were very modest indeed. Now, starting off with TNF blocking biologics, we've seen extraordinary changes. It's really been so exciting to be a rheumatologist. And the, the psoriatic arthritis field benefited greatly from the advent of TNF blockade. The problem, of course, is that TNF blockers are efficacious in perhaps two thirds of patients, but even in those patients, that over four or five years, around half of patients will have stopped their medication. So, in a lifelong disease, often starting in the early 20s, there's a lot of work to do. So, an exciting decade, but what have we achieved? Well, now we've got new targets, and that's really what's been driving me and many colleagues of late thinking about how to use the presence and functional biology of IL-23 and IL-17 to move to new therapeutics and new strategies. My personal target for the next six months is to translate some of the trial data sets that we have into really easily understood clinical outputs. We, we're very convinced now that targeting, for example, P40 with Ustikinumab or IL-17A with secukinumab uh, leads to clinically meaningful improvements in people with psoriatic arthritis. The next target is to work out how to use these drugs most effectively, in which patients are the some who will benefit more from one or another strategic approach, and also to get some familiarity with these agents. How well tolerated are they? Are there going to be adverse events about which we should be concerned? Of course, it's early days because they're still relatively new to our practice. But that's a lot of work to do in a relatively short period of time. We've been celebrating success, but that would be not to ignore the very great challenges that we still face. So, first of all, we cannot yet cure any of our rheumatic diseases. And if we think particularly about psoriatic arthritis, we can't cure the disease. We're offering young people a lifelong chronic illness for which, yes, we can improve matters. But very often we offer people partial responses and we congratulate ourselves. But actually what we should really be doing is looking to achieve remission in the majority of our patients. Remission that can be maintained potentially without needing chronic drug therapeutics. And we're nowhere near that for the majority of our patients. So the major challenge is to understand why people respond only partially, to understand how to get them to remission, and to understand how to keep them.